Welcome to the Nordica Pro Series, designed for ski instructors worldwide to help with their certifications. I'm here with my teammate, Troy Walsh, and Pacific Northwest examiner, Megan Jones, and our goal through these series of videos is to help you pass your level one, two, or three skiing certification. In this video, we're going to introduce the level two assessment activity. Sounds good, Megan. Should we go up on the hill? Let's get started. So as the token Canadian in the group, it is my job to introduce the level two assessment, hockey stop. So in a hockey stop, we would like to see the legs turning separate of the body, a hard edge set, and a blocking pole plant. Our next level two assessment activity is thousand steps. Key points in the thousand steps are being able to manage pressure from foot to foot and be able to edge the ski all the way around the turns. All righty, thousand steps. Got to be able to balance on one foot, step foot to foot. You got to be able to turn the ski just a little bit and you got to be able to keep moving and stay in balance laterally so you're not falling over because it's the ability to, to move off of an edge ski and stand on an edge ski and not break the free loose but be able to to make little adjustments so you're not falling over key points are starting to step around the corner all the way with a nice cadence and setting up a clean edges moving from one foot to the other in a very rhythmical state One of the key things to remember when we're doing thousand steps, the skis are going to naturally want to diverge. And that's fine, as long as you can keep the ski on edge and manage pressure foot to foot throughout the entire arc of the turn. All right, now we're gonna look at a bridge between traversing and the fallen leaf. And we're gonna do a little drill called side slip edge sets. The important part is that we are able to control our edges to side slip and then use our feet to edge set. What's important is that we continue to maintain that basic stance that we traversed in and we use our feet and our knees to put the skis on an edge. There's a big difference between this and that. I'm trying to get the edge there. It's right here this in the feet, the ankles, and the knees. This is what we need to be able to control. So release and set, release, set. Ankles. Watch Megan here. It's the attempt to tip the knees in, huh? Tip the knees in to get the edges, not pushed down. So we're remembering the basic stance, ankles, knees and feet are tipping up the hill to gain edge grip. It's very different than pushing the ski away. Tip, 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 tip. Right here we're tip. rolling the feet and knees then just pushing out or bending down, huh? Let's tip the skis in. That's the edge control. Right there, right there. What's important is that we use our feet to control our edge and not our head and shoulders. When we start using our head and shoulders, it all falls apart. We gotta use our feet down low to control the edges so that we don't push our skis off to the side. This is Michael Rogain reporting to you live from Big Sky, Montana. Okay, we're taking a look at the level two skating down the fall line. When skating down the fall line, really focus on having a balanced stance and being balanced over the ski. If I move too far inside, I can't push off of it. Remember that this activity is all about propulsion and making your way down the hill faster. Keep the cadence and the tempo up to match the speed that you're traveling down the hill. 
We're gonna have Michael and Megan demonstrate. Notice that it's a propulsion activity. Everyone's working hard to gain speed as they go through this. Ski performance is clean, not pushed or smeared. It's edged and tracking forward. The traverse stays the same, but leg legs change in order to maintain ski snow contact. As the terrain gets bigger, the movements have to begin to become larger. So that basic stance holds true in a traverse. Even though you're getting long or short, or short or long, you're still able to maintain the components of that basic stance. Notice how the legs flex and extend to manage the terrain and keep skis on the snow. General stance remains the same no matter where we are. In this assessment activity, for level two, we're gonna look at mobile ski. What's important is a corridor. The corridor is about two groomer cat tracks wide, 12 feet, somewhere in there. That way, you can make a little bit bigger turn if you need it, but the goal is, is can you manage your skiing down these moguls, keeping good ski snow contact, good turn shape, and good absorption of the terrain. Be in a little bit of a rounder line, making sure I'm anticipating the terrain and allowing the skis to maintain contact with the snow. If there's a loss of balance because of moguls, look, there's a loss of balance. But do your best to keep a rhythm, stay in the rhythm, and get back into rhythm if you lose it. So all we gotta do is just make sure that we can link turns through some uneven terrain. Can we take a round turn, use the correct movements to get around these bumps? So the goal here is just being able to link some turns through uneven terrain, huh? Just, can you shape turns over terrain? Skiing a little bit wider of a line, trying to maintain good ski snow contact while turning legs and absorbing the terrain. Adjusting my tactics so I can manage the run, managing the speed, managing my tactics as we're working through some nice brown springtime bumps here at Big Sky. Montana. Can you just make a way down the hill in uneven terrain, showing some good mechanics in a little bit of bumps? Can you get to use a pole plant? Can you twist your skis? Can you absorb some of this snowy piles to keep ski snow contact? Can you make a few turns that are in the fall line? So look, we're looking at assessment activities for level one, level two, and level three. We went through level one assessment activities. Straight run, wedge turns, wedge Christie's, some basic parallel and an application of those assessment activities in the bumps. Remember, if you can, the reason that we do those assessment activities, they're to check your basic stance. They're to check your ability to utilize and integrate 
the fundamentals and our skills concept into your skiing. Just because we do the straight run as the first thing doesn't mean that it's not important when it comes to mogul skiing. Being able to check your basic stance in mogul skiing is what allows you to be successful at mogul skiing. So remember that use these assessment activities as ways to check your skills, your skiing, so that you can integrate and apply them to situations where you can be successful there as well. Clearly, the weather has changed, but that doesn't change the fact that we still have to go through these assessment activities. Now we're gonna do level two assessment activities of a funnel or an hourglass. We're gonna take the basic parallel turn, ramp it up a couple of clicks, but the important part is that we're able to shape and change and alter and adapt the size and shape of our turn so that we make an overall path that is one of a funnel or one of an hourglass. And the reason that we ask for the shape of the funnel is so that we can tell if you can adjust every single turn shape, size, and radius smoothly and effectively to make a track that looks like overall like a funnel or one of an hourglass. This is a level two task. The funnel turn going from long turn to short turns. Showing your mastery of that dirt duration, intensity, rate, and timing. Okay, this is a funnel that we're doing. Major pieces of this is making sure that there's a distinct difference between a bigger turn that starts to come smaller and smaller and smaller and then a little bit bigger as we start making our way around to make the funnel. Funnel checks the ability for adjustability in your turn shape. So every turn has to get a little smaller, which means that you've changed that rate, duration, intensity, and time so that it looks like a funnel. We're gonna shift to level two, assessment activity, short radius turns. Short radius turns. This means that you gotta do a series of short radius turns, not short swing and not medium, but somewhere in a short radius turn. I'd look at maybe about a cat track wide at the most, but the ability to make a round steered turn that has shape to it and it's not just pivot edge set, pivot edge set, and it's not a big arc carve turn either. It's got some shape to it. So you gotta figure out how you integrate the fundamentals to accomplish the task of short radius turns. Again, level two assessment activity, short radius turns. Short radius, remember this is a radius, it's not a short swing. A little bit faster tempo than what we've been showing in a couple of the activities. Duration, intensity, rate and timing is nice and performance oriented. So in the short term, we are looking for the same functional stance. We're just looking to see that you can move your center of mass ahead of your face of support. And direct those skis back under your body. Can you pick up the pace a little bit? Continue to steer the skis separate from your upper body. Good pole activity. Good use of ski design and steering. So we just got done with a bunch of level two assessment activities. And I feel like a highlight for me today would be starting to develop some versatility and adaptability. 
Troy, what's a highlight for you for today? I think just being able to change the duration, intensity, and rate of the movements just makes a big difference in the, all those activities. Yeah. Megan, you got a highlight? Understanding the fundamentals and the foundational movements don't change, but your understanding and application of those things have to be better resolved. So, a couple of highlights, level two assessment activities. Remember, you gotta work hard, but you can do this, you can pass this assessment.